Introduction The story of King David's encounter with Bathsheba, as recounted in 2 Samuel 11, is a poignant and often debated narrative within the Hebrew Bible. This passage depicts David's moral struggle and his abuse of power, raising profound questions about ethics, consent, and accountability. In this introduction, we will explore the events surrounding David's interaction with Bathsheba and the diverse interpretations that scholars and religious commentators have offered over the centuries. David's actions on the rooftop of his palace, where he observes Bathsheba bathing and subsequently summons her to his chambers, have long been scrutinized for their ethical implications. Despite Bathsheba being married to Uriah, one of David's loyal soldiers, David succumbs to his desires and engages in an adulterous relationship with her. The consequences of this affair reverberate throughout David's reign and serve as a cautionary tale about the abuse of power and the moral complexities of leadership. Throughout history, scholars and theologians have offered varying interpretations of David's actions and Bathsheba's role in the narrative. Some view David's behavior as a flagrant abuse of power, tantamount to rape, given Bathsheba's vulnerable position as a subject of the king. Others emphasize Bathsheba's agency and assert that she may have willingly participated in the affair, challenging traditional readings of the story. In this discussion, we will explore these divergent perspectives and analyze the moral and ethical dimensions of David and Bathsheba's story. By examining the historical context, cultural norms, and textual nuances of 2 Samuel 11, we aim to deepen our understanding of this complex and compelling biblical narrative. David and Bathsheba The story of David's interactions with Bathsheba, as described in 2 Samuel 11, is a well-known narrative in the Hebrew Bible. In this passage, King David, while walking on the roof of his palace, observes Bathsheba bathing and is immediately drawn to her beauty. Despite learning that Bathsheba is married to Uriah, one of his loyal soldiers, David's desire for her remains unabated. He summons Bathsheba to his palace and engages in sexual relations with her, ultimately resulting in her pregnancy. The passage describing David's interactions with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11 verses 2-4 reads, One evening David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. Interpretations of this story vary among scholars and religious commentators. Some view David's actions as an abuse of power and an act of adultery, given that Bathsheba was already married to Uriah. Furthermore, David's position as king may have placed Bathsheba in a vulnerable and coercive situation, where she may have felt compelled to comply with his advances due to his authority. David E. Garland, along with his wife Diana, interprets David's behavior in this passage as an example of rape within the context of the Hebrew Bible. They argue that David's actions constitute rape because Bathsheba may not have had the ability to freely consent to sexual relations with David, given the power dynamics at play. As the king, David wielded significant authority over Bathsheba, potentially leaving her with little choice but to comply with his desires. This interpretation sheds light on the importance of considering power dynamics and consent in biblical narratives. It highlights the ethical implications of David's actions and the need to critically examine the interactions between characters within the context of their social and cultural milieu. Ultimately, discussions surrounding this story offer valuable insights into issues of morality, power, and ethics within biblical literature. In Sanhedrin 69b of the Talmud, the Gemara delves into an inquiry regarding the age at which individuals and previous generations became fathers. It begins by attempting to calculate Solomon's age at the time of certain events based on biblical narratives. This calculation involves tracing the timeline of significant events such as Absalom's rebellion and the death of Ahithophel, Solomon's grandfather. Initially, the Gemara deduces Solomon's age at different points in his life by examining the sequence of events and the ages of individuals involved. It uses various biblical references to establish a timeline, concluding that Solomon was at least seven years old during Absalom's rebellion. 
To further support its argument, the Gemara refers to a verse from Psalms and a teaching from a Baraita, suggesting that Ahithophel died at the age of 33, with Solomon being seven years old at the time of his death. Based on this information, the Gemara calculates that Ahithophel was 26 years old at the time of Solomon's birth. However, the Gemara anticipates a counterargument to this calculation. It proposes that Ahithophel and his son Eliam might have fathered children at a later age, and Bathsheba could have given birth to Solomon when she was only six years old. This hypothesis challenges the previous calculation by suggesting that women can conceive at a younger age and that the ages of Ahithophel and Eliam might not align with the initial assumptions. To further support this counterargument, the Gemara points to a biblical reference indicating that Bathsheba had already given birth to a child from David before Solomon's birth. This suggests that Bathsheba could have been younger than assumed when she gave birth to Solomon. Overall, the Gemara engages in a meticulous analysis of biblical texts and historical events to determine the age at which individuals in earlier generations fathered children. It considers various factors, including the ages of key figures and the sequence of events while also anticipating and addressing potential objections to its conclusions. The Gemara asks, and from where do we derive that in earlier generations men fathered children at this age? If we say that we know this from the following calculation, it is written, Is this not Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, wife of Uriah the Hittite? 2 Samuel 11 verse 3 And it is also written, And Eliam, son of Ahithophel the Jilonite, 2 Samuel 23 verse 34, which teaches that Bathsheba was the granddaughter of Ahithophel, and it is written with reference to the birth of Solomon, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah, for the Lord's sake, 2 Samuel 12 verse 25. And later it is written, and it came to pass after two years, that Absalom had sheep shearers, 2 Samuel 13 verse 23. And at that time Amnon was killed, see 2 Samuel 13 verses 23 to 29, this being at least two years after Solomon was born. And afterward it is written, So Absalom fled, and went to Geshur, and was there three years, 2 Samuel 13 verse 38, so that this was five years after Solomon was born. And it is written, So Absalom dwelt two years in Jerusalem, and did not see the king's face, 2 Samuel 14 verse 28 bringing the tally to seven years after Solomon was born. And it is written, And it came to pass after forty years, that Absalom said to the king, I pray you, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed to the Lord, in Hebron, 2 Samuel 15 verse 7. This was the beginning of Absalom's rebellion against David. Accordingly, at that time Solomon was at least seven years old, and at some point during the rebellion it is written, and when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey, and arose, and went to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and strangled himself and died, 2 Samuel 17 verse 23. And it is written, Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, Psalms 55 verse 24. And in keeping with this verse, it is taught in a Baraita. All of Dog's years were only thirty-four and Ahithophel's were only thirty-three. Neither reached the age of thirty-five, half of the normal life span of seventy years. Based on this, one can calculate. How many years did Ahithophel live? Thirty-three. Subtract seven years, Solomon's age at the time of Ahithophel's death, which leaves Ahithophel twenty-six years old at the time of Solomon's birth. Subtract two more years for three pregnancies, one preceding the birth of Eliam the son of Ahithophel, one preceding the birth of Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, and one preceding the birth of Solomon, son of Bathsheba. It turns out that three generations were born in twenty-four years, and that each and every parent begot a child at the age of eight. The Gemara refutes this proof. From where do you prove this? Perhaps both Ahithophel and his son Eliam fathered children when they were each nine years old and Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon when she was six, because a woman is stronger and can conceive at an earlier age. Know that this is true that women conceive at an earlier age, as Bathsheba had already given birth to a child from David before giving birth to Solomon. See 2 Samuel 11 verse 27. Therefore, no proof can be derived from here. Conclusion The story of David and Bathsheba, as depicted in 2 Samuel 11, 
remains a source of profound reflection and debate within religious and scholarly circles. Through its portrayal of power, desire, and moral ambiguity, this narrative invites us to grapple with timeless questions about ethics, accountability, and the human condition. As we conclude our exploration of David and Bathsheba's story, it is evident that their tale resonates with enduring relevance and significance. Whether viewed as a cautionary tale of hubris and corruption or as a testament to the complexities of human relationships. In our analysis, we have encountered diverse interpretations and perspectives that reflect the richness and depth of biblical scholarship. From discussions of consent and coercion to reflections on the nature of leadership and moral responsibility, the story of David and Bathsheba prompts us to confront uncomfortable truths and wrestle with profound ethical dilemmas. As we continue to engage with this timeless narrative, may we approach it with humility, empathy, and a commitment to understanding its implications for our lives and societies. By grappling with the complexities of David and Bathsheba's story, we enrich our understanding of Scripture and deepen our appreciation for the enduring truths it contains.